10 and there at verse 27. John 10 verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest. Because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though he believe not me, believe the works, that he may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized. And there he abode. And many resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. the 10th chapter of John's Gospel. When I look at verses 28 onwards, and it's Christ who is speaking, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And then particularly verse 30, I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. How many gods are there? Is there just one God? Or there are uh, three gods? As uh, sometimes the Christian is accused of believing. Are there millions of gods? So many that we can't remember who they are. Well, there are three monotheistic religions in the world. That is, they believe there is only one God. Judaism, Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Christianity, any study of Religion will tell you that. Three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Now, one of the doctrines that have been most under attack throughout the history of the church is, who is Jesus? Is he God? Is he man? And that's been under attack right from the early conception of the church. Who is Jesus? The early history of the church battled in the 4th century against what was known as Arianism. Arius was a bishop who was expelled for preaching that Jesus was a created being. 
He's not very God. This may be like God. He's a lesser God. And we've got that teaching with us today in the ranks of the Watchtower and Track Society, otherwise known as Jehovah's Witnesses. Islam comes along and says, Jesus is a prophet, a great prophet, but nevertheless just a prophet. Well, I want to see that the New Testament declares that Jesus Christ is the eternal God. Amen. And the church believed that. People will date and say the church never believed Jesus was God. We've got John. And he's sometimes referred to as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Ever heard of Polycarp? Polycarp was one of the early apostolic fathers. He knew the apostle John. And Polycarp believed that Jesus was God. We even have the dying words of Polycarp. Eighty-six years have I served Christ and he hath done me no wrong. Then we have Irenaeus. Irenaeus was a friend and disciple of Polycarp. And then we have Ignatius, a Tertullian, who coined the term Trinity. Now the word doesn't appear in the Bible, but the concept of one God consisting of three distinct separate persons is very clearly taught. Yes. And I want to look this morning, firstly, that Notice four things. Notice firstly the protection. The protection. Christ said, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. My Father is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. People argue today, well, eternal security. The person who is genuinely a Christian, can they be saved today, lost tomorrow, saved the next day? Well, the answer is no. No. Now, Martin Luther once said, love God and do as you please. Love God and do as you please. You see, there are some people who believe if you believe in eternal security or the perseverance or preservation of the saints, then you can live like a drunkard. You can live like the devil. Martin Luther, again, love God and do as you please. Well, then I can go out and get drunk. I can go out and sleep around. I can live like a reprobate. It doesn't matter because I'm still saved. No, no. If you love God, you won't do that. Yes. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. So the Christian loves God and does as they please. The Christian loves righteousness and hates sin. Why do we say you can't be saved today and lost tomorrow? Because salvation originates with God. Yes. Doesn't originate with man. I give unto them eternal life. Who's the one who gives eternal life? Christ. I'll give eternal life. It didn't begin with us. If we could lose our salvation, we would lose it. Salvation originates with God not man and there is none greater than God now if you're a shepherd and you're a good shepherd like Christ is and you love your sheep you're going to make sure you lose none of your sheep if it's in your power I've no doubt there's many a good shepherd who has lost his sheep they've been devoured They've gone over the cliff. They've been knocked down on the road. But if he is all powerful, none of his sheep are going to be lost. 
And if you were to ask him, if it was in your power, would you keep all of your sheep? I'd keep everyone. And God is all powerful. And salvation begins with him. And therefore he is determined I will lose none of my sheep. What about Judas? Judas was never a true Christian. Judas was never a genuine believer. The Apostle John in writing, the same John, in 1 John 2.19 says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that it might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So you'll have people who say, I, I was a Christian, but I became an atheist. I was a Christian, but I became a Muslim. No, you were never a Christian. You were never a Christian. No outside power or force can take from God's hand. Now a father who is crossing the road holds the hand of the child. And then may say, hold my hand tightly. And the grip of the child is not very powerful. So the father holds on to the hand and won't let them go. Is God any less a father to not let his children go? I know my sheep, said Christ, and they shall never perish. Their protection God gives to his sheep. And also another reason, we are saved ultimately not for our benefit. We live in a very narcissistic world where it's all about me. Many years ago there was a slogan painted outside churches, how much are you worth? And the meaning behind that is you are worth so much. You're worth so much that you were worth dying for. That's not biblical teaching. You are worth nothing. Jacob says he's about a worm of the ground. What makes salvation so wonderful is that you were nothing but Christ, while we were yet sinners, died for the ungodly. But the ultimate purpose is not to save you, it is to exalt God. The Father is given to the Son a perfect bride. And he's given her to his son. And he's not going to allow any one of that bride to be tarnished. So he'll protect her. Secondly, the proclamation. The proclamation. Christ proclaims. What does he proclaim? I and my father are one. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses will say, well that just means one in unity. Like a father who takes his child fishing and we're going down the road with our fishing rods. And the father can say, me and my son are one. We're united in our love of fishing. And we're united we're just one in unity and identity. But if that is all Christ was saying and nothing more, look at verse 31. Then the Jews struck up stones again to stone him. Why would he stone a man for simply saying, me and my son are, are, are one, we're on the same page? Why is that worthy of being stoned? He wouldn't stone a man for simply claiming that. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. So they were saying, You've just blasphemed. You've just put yourself on the same level as Jehovah God. 
And to the Orthodox Jew, there's nothing more blasphemous than claiming to be equal with God. The Jews would recite daily the Shema, Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And Christ claimed equality with the Father. And to them, that was blasphemy. He is one in nature and essence. He is very God himself. That's what he's claiming. And they knew he was claiming that. There's a clear testimony in John 8, 58. Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Now that's maybe a bit complicated for English speakers. But he's quoting from Exodus 3, verse 14. When Moses said to Jehovah God, to Yahweh, Who shall I say sent me? What is your name and the answer I am yes. I am and again in that chapter they knew he is blaspheming to be the great I am because in John eight fifty nine, then took they up stones to cast at him why blasphemy The Apostle Paul says, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So it is orthodox, biblical, authentic, New Testament Christianity where Jesus claims to be very God. Now you say, well, you believe in three gods then? No, we don't. Believe in one God. But how can Jesus be God, the Father be God, and even the Holy Spirit be God? That's three. Well, as I said to a Muslim just last week, who tried to say, that's three gods, I said, no, it isn't. He said, right, one plus one plus one on a piece of paper. But equals, what's the answer? Three. One plus one plus one equals three. And yet I said, look at those numerical figures. Each of those one is still a one. One plus one plus one equals three. But the one is still the one. The first one, the second one, and the third one don't become three it's together they become three and yet there is still numerical one I said besides plus Job says who can by searching find out God who can by searching find out the almighty unto perfection we don't understand you can't fathom out God but the clear teaching of the Bible is there is one God but he consists in three distinct separate persons Father, Son and Holy Spirit that's the clear testament I can't understand those who claim to be Christians and says oh but I have problems with the Trinity I have no problem with it it's clearly there yes. in Old and New Testament it's clearer in the, in the New Testament the theologians tell us it's implied in the Old Testament but biblical theology is the study of how throughout the scriptures Christian doctrine unfolds and becomes more and more clear. The doctrine of hell, for example, clearly taught in the New Testament, hardly found anywhere in the Old Testament. It's progressive. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. The Father is not the Son. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. And the Father is not the Holy Spirit. That's heresy. It was rejected in the early church. 
Three distinct persons. We need to be clear on this. There was a man who did a survey, a bit of an eccentric, but he was right in his theology. He stood outside the church and he asked Christians as they were coming out, is Jesus the Father? And the answers were appalling. Yes, they said. Is the Holy Spirit Jesus? Yes. No, that's heresy called modalism was rejected. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three equal, co-eternal, separate persons. There is one being, but three persons. Difference between being and person? Well, being asks what? You have a rock. It has being. It's a rock. You can look at it and you can examine it and you can see it's what it's made of. But it's not a person. What is God? Being. He is one. Who is God? That's the person. Who is God? He's revealed himself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit throughout scripture and it's under attack as much now as ever and I said to a Muslim chap last week who is the I am who is the first and the last in the Quran who's the first and the last Allah well I said Jesus said he's the first and the last Revelation 1 I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Jesus claimed to be the first and the last. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The proclamation. So we proclaim one God, but three distinct, separate persons. Notice thirdly the problem. The protection, the proclamation, the problem. They took up stones to stone Christ. He blasphemed. And if you were in living in biblical times, especially the Old Testament, and you blasphemed the name of Jehovah God, you would be worthy of the death sentence. In Leviticus chapter 24 we're given what the penalty is because God is holy people don't understand that why would a man be stoned for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day why would a man be struck down because he merely stopped put his hand on the ark in order to stop it stumbling into the dirt isn't that petty well no because when you understand the absolute purity and holiness of God you'll understand why God judged Leviticus 24 verse 16 and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord he shall surely be put to death and all the congregations certainly stone him that's found in Numbers and Deuteronomy as well. So the Jews saw a blasphemer in their midst. And we're going to stone you. Many years ago I mentioned this to a Jehovah's Witness. And they said, ah, but read on. Read on. Jesus said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are God's. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. They think that cancels out what Jesus said in verse 30. I and my Father are one, but that's not what Christ is doing at all. What Christ is doing, as he does on so many occasions, is to point out their hypocrisy, their inconsistency. How come you say I blaspheme because I said I am the son of God whereas your old scriptures call 
people sons of God. You're inconsistent. For in Psalm 82, which is where he's referring back to, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. If you were a judge, human judges were often given the title of gods. And you can understand why. They would say who lives, who dies. One daughter of a well-known heavyweight champion of the world came home and said, Dad, do you know we are gods? Do you know we are gods? It says in the Bible, ye are gods. And I thought, well, why didn't she quote the whole verse? Ye are gods, and ye shall die like men. There are those who claim to be gods, but they die like men. There are you, Saddam Husseins, and your world rulers, and your pharaohs. People bow down to them as if they are gods. But the Bible says, but you'll die like a man, because that's really what you are. There's only one true and living God. But there are false gods, aren't there? There's the God of this world whom Paul refers to. The God of this world, he says, has blinded the minds of them that believe not. So Christ is merely pointing out by quoting the Old Testament, you're inconsistent. You accept the title of gods for earthly judges, but you won't listen to the Son of God. And Christ is saying, Say of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. Christ didn't say, you misunderstood what I'm saying. Rather, he dumbs down, he says, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though he believe not me, believe the works, that he may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. And then what do we read? Oh, we're very sorry. We thought you were claiming to be God. No. Verse 39. Therefore they sought again to take him. But he escaped out of their midst. You see, Christ came into the world. And he was 100% man. Without sin. And when you were, if you were to put yourself into New Testament times and you were sitting down uh, talking to this man Jesus of Nazareth or you're like the woman at the well in John chapter 4 and you come along what do you see you see a man like any other man and you're talking and that's what they would have seen here's a man but listen to his teaching and to his claims. He is demonstrating, particularly in John's Gospel, that he is very God and equal with God the Father. Look at my works, Christ is saying, if you don't believe me. Christ raised people from the dead. Christ said, I'm the light of the world. Christ said, I am the way. Christ said, I am the truth. Christ said, I am the life. We don't, I think, fully understand what these claims were meaning and the depths of them. To claim to be light. It's the first words we find in Scripture. Let there be light. Without light, there's no life. Christ claimed to be the very source, the very originator of life and light. And they knew these claims belong only to God. 
And Christ took them to himself. And Christ is saying, my father bears witness to who I am. Don't just believe me. Look at the evidence. The father is in me and I in him. They look and they see John did no miracle. But all things that John spake of this man were true. That's why Thomas said, my Lord and my God. I don't think any true, genuine, born again believer can deny the Trinity. It's not pagan, as we're often told. It's not a man-made doctrine. Tertullian, yes, coined the phrase in the second century. Just to put a name to a biblical doctrine that the New Testament teaches. We find, don't we, the Trinity formula several times in Scripture. You think there, can't you, of the, the Great Commission where Christ sent out his church. And what does he say? Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Three. Trinity. Or you could look at the Apostles Paul writing to the Corinthians in the second Corinthians at the end of that letter the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you we know don't we the confession statement so often God's grace is mentioned God's free favour and acceptance how come? because of this one the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ one the love of God two the communion of the Holy Ghost three three not three gods that's tritheism we don't believe in three gods, one God, three distinct separate persons. Or Ephesians 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit. One. One spirit. Verse 5. One Lord. One faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. So we've got the, the Spirit, verse 4. The Lord Jesus, verse 5. The Father, verse 6 of Ephesians 4. One God, three distinct separate persons. And God the Father bears witness to who Christ is. And a person who bows the knee to Jesus Christ and comes to know him as Lord and Saviour knows who he is. The protection, the proclamation, the problem, and then fourthly and lastly the proving. The proving. Miracles authenticate who is from God. In the Quran, Muhammad performs no miracle whatsoever. Written in 200 years later. This man, Jesus Christ, there are 37 written miracles recorded for us in the New Testament that bear witness. The Apostle Paul regarding the apostleship. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 12. The signs of an apostle were wrought amongst you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. And 
They were the foundation of the early church. And they authenticated their ministry by signs and wonders, which are not needed today. Christ had power over the dead. He had power over life and death. He stilled the storm. You see, there are times, and we need to remember, Christ is one person, but he consists of two natures, human and divine. And in his human nature, he had human limitations. Okay, he was truly a man. And he had human limitations. Which is why we find where Christ said, No man knows the day or the hour but my Father only. Not even the Son knows. People use that to try and trip up the Christian and say, There, there we are, Jesus is God, how come he didn't know? will say he's also man. One person, but two natures. He is human. And in his human nature, he had to eat and he had to sleep. In his divine nature, he calmed the storm. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He had power over the demonic. And we see the two natures displayed in the New Testament. We see his human nature with its limitations. And we see his divine nature with him being all powerful. Yes. I mean, the, the, the seas, if you've ever been in a storm, n nobody can withstand the sea. It, it, it's terrifying. And yet Christ said, be still. The sea listened. He showed his power over nature, over demons, and over death. There is enough evidence in the New Testament to authenticate that the man Jesus Christ was very God himself. The evidence is there. The divinity of Christ is there. And we read in verse 41, And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle. But this, but all things that this John spoke of, this man, were true. And many believed on him there. So we worship the God-man. People say, oh, God can't die. We never said God died. God is eternal by his very nature. He doesn't cease to be. But God became a man. And in his humanity, he died. Yes. But then he raised himself from the grave. Try doing that. We have no power over death. When it comes, we are powerless. And when we succumb to its power, we have no power but Christ succumbed to death willingly. And in John 2 he says, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up again. But he spake of the temple of his body. No man in the course of human history has raised himself from the dead. But this man Jesus Christ did. Is he a liar? Lunatic? Or is he Lord? To the Christian, he is Lord. He is very God, very man. And don't listen to the lies where people tell, oh, it was just made up in the 4th century, blah, 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 the Council of Nicaea in 325. No, it wasn't. It was known far along before. When the church met together, there were 300 and so bishops, probably a 1,000 people in all, including deacons and friends and all the rest. And they met to not invent doctrine, but to sort out because there are lots of heretics who were going around even in the New Testament times and early centuries of the church that taught falsehood as there are today. The Christians got together and said, well, let's declare this. What does the Bible say? 
And when they had a vote, over 300 bishops, at the most, including Arius, three at the most, maybe two out of 300 plus, said, we think he's just like God, he's not very God. Homo usios, is he the same as God? Or homoi usios, is he just like God, similar to God? And the early church overwhelmingly attested to the accuracy of the New Testament. Jesus Christ is very God himself. And when you stand before him, you'll meet him. Say that to everybody. You know, people blaspheme and say, you'll either meet Jesus as your friend or you'll meet him as your enemy. And the Bible says at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everyone. Why? Because he is very God as well as being very man. Let us pray.